Greetings YouTube and welcome once again to the Mechanics of Thought. It is obvious to anybody who's ever been served at an automated checkout, seen the inside of a modern factory or knows what an autonomous vehicle is, that the machines are indeed coming. But what exactly is the upshot of all this? How might it affect the economy, the job market and even the very notion of what it means to work? Automation is certainly not a new phenomenon, and throughout history, technology and tool use has led to ever more productive societies. Our tool use has grown increasingly sophisticated, and our workload has increased exponentially. It was the agricultural revolution that first gave us a labour surplus, because it meant for the first time in human history that less of us had to spend our time gathering food resources. This, of course, led to a boom in other areas of production, because people could, for the first time, spend their productive output on other things besides hunting and gathering foods. Specialists could develop. Some people could become builders and craftsmen and carpenters, and later, philosophers, engineers and scientists. Eventually, the next big wave of automation hit us in the 1700s, with the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. It is not too dissimilar from our current revolution of automation. Many workers' jobs are being made redundant by a radical increase in technology, and the need for human work is being ever reduced by machines, who can outperform humans in terms of both speed and accuracy. They never tire, they don't need holidays, and most importantly, they don't need to be paid. I would argue, however, that the current wave of intelligent machines is different from the previous in a few important ways, which I'll discuss later. But for now, in order to understand the significance of the current wave of automation, let us briefly consider the alleged value of human labour. Now, in order for a society to work, we need to have an economy. We can think of this as having two distinct goals. The first is the provision of goods and services to people, and the second is the division of the productive power required to deliver those goods and services. In the current economic model of capitalism, most people have nothing to sell but their time, which they sell to a company owner for recompense in the form of wages. They can use these wages to buy the goods and services that they need, and despite the obvious inequalities inherent in the system, the system does fulfil the criteria of being an economy. It's a system which produces goods and services, and distributes the labour required to create them. However, when automation becomes available, machines can often outperform human labour, and don't need these wages. The demand for goods and services does not increase, so less people are required for the same output. Less wages usually means that the products will become cheaper to produce and the company can underprice their competitors. This leads to an increasing requirement for companies to innovate and automate if they are to compete with their competitors, and eventually we end up with a race to the bottom in terms of unemployment. In previous automation revolutions, old manual jobs were replaced by more highly skilled and cognitively demanding work. Also, the theory goes, mill workers became machine engineers and unskilled workers became electricians, plumbers and administrative staff. But this automation revolution is not like the revolutions of the past. The ad hoc committee on the triple revolution wrote a memo to the President of the United States warning, and I quote, a new era of production has begun. Its principles of organisation are as different from those of the industrial era as those of the industrial era were different from the agricultural. The cyber national revolution has been brought about by the combination of the computer and the automated self-regulating machine. This results in a system of almost unlimited productive capacity, which requires progressively less human labour. CyberNation is already reorganising the economic and social system to meet its own needs. The concerns here seem very topical, but the note was in fact written in 1964 by a group of scientists and visionaries. We are finally starting to see some of those predictions come true. For example, the Bank of Barclays is set to replace 30,000 jobs in favour of automation in an effort to reduce staffing costs. 
And as mentioned earlier, all major supermarkets have installed self-checkout services, which reduce staffing requirements to a mere fraction. Medea, which is a major manufacturer of air conditioners and other air appliances, plans to cut 6,000 of its 30,000 workers this year to make way for automation. Some companies are not only reducing the need for labor, but eliminating it entirely. A manufacturing methodology called lights out manufacturing relies entirely on automated processes that require no on-site human presence. Currently, electrical engineering giant Philips has one such factory, which produces electronic razors using 126 robots and runs 24-7. Similarly, a Japanese manufacturer, Fanuc, is capable of running for 30 days straight without human intervention. The creepiest thing about this factory is that it produces robots. That's right, robots producing robots, the end is truly upon us. One thing that separates this revolution from previous is the fact that we are no longer simply using specialized machines but instead universal touring machines, which can, theoretically at least, perform any task. In the Industrial Revolution, much of the need for manual labour was replaced. In today's Computational Revolution, we can also replace increasingly complex cognitive work. And as computers become increasingly sophisticated, the range of jobs able to be automated will inevitably increase. Think your job is too hard for a computer? Think again.